what's up guys? Top pros in Clash Royale have created a new P.E.K.K.A. deck to own the leaderboard. By piling on bridge spam with a purpose to cycle to evolved archers as soon as possible, this deck takes complete control of most matches. The bridge spam with Rail Ghost, Battery Ram, and Bandit will give you opportunities to get bits of damage, while keeping your opponent's elixir tragically low. So when you release your evolved archers, opponents will have nowhere to go but down. While the evolved archers are sniping everything accumulating value, opponents will have to immediately remove them with a fireball or poison, netting them at least a negative one trade every time. And their slow and painful death by depletion of elixir is their best case. If they don't have fireball or an immediate way of removing the archers, they're dead right on the spot. Evolved archers attacking behind a P.E.K.K.A., Battle Ram, or Bandit is an instant good game. They'll snipe buildings and distractions so your relentless bridge spam will wreck. It's time to evolve the P.E.K.K.A.'s weaponry to play with arrows so we can pierce through more defenses and assert dominance. Lots of love to everyone that's using credit code Sir Tag to support the channel. Hey, we've got a game against Kenner. What's up, man? So usually we're used to playing against people named Ken, Kenneth, but not Kenner. This guy has got a new evolution of names. We're dropping our archers in the back and he's going to go for skeleton dragon split. So when we see skeleton dragons, we're expecting to be some type of fireball bait or a lava hound deck. So if he's running Lava Hound, he's definitely going to have Barbarian. So we want to split up his Elixir here. I'm going to go for a Zap on the Skeleton Dragon and finish off the Goblins. I don't think the Bandit's going to dash on the tower, but the Archer is going to stay strong and force out more Elixir. After we see Barbarrel, it's safe to say that we're not playing against someone that's going to be running a Lava Hound deck. I think it might be Graveyard. If I go in for an Adventurous Poison here, it will be able to kill his Little Prince and maybe even stop him from activating King Tower. Yo, top 1,000 player just whiffed the Nato on the King Tower activation. And that's insanely good for us. He thought that the Royal Ghost would go directly towards the King Tower, but it latched onto the Little Prince instead. A different type of royalty. So, I don't know, man. I guess uh, you had some plan, and now you're a little bit scrambled. So he's going to decide to go and ramble through with the recruits. I want to be able to finish those off with our recruit counter of our... Oh, man. I was going to say splash damage with the Royal Ghost for more royalty, but I don't necessarily know if this is going to work out for us. We have to stay put on the Electro Giant. I can't even go and allocate any Elixir to go and keep our Little Prince alive. Our little prince will stay alive, fortunately, but man, it was scary for a sec. Yo, we're bouncing back the barbarrel. We got the little prince action on the right, and we also have the bandit and the little P.E.K.K.A. push in the left. This is working out super well. Yo, I think that the P.E.K.K.A. might even lock onto the tower. There's nothing he can do to stop me. We're ready to munch, man. We're gonna have your tower for lunch, and maybe the little prince too? No, dang it. All right, the one cool thing about evolved archers, well, there's many cool things. They do outrange the little prince, so that is gonna give us huge value. Three shots, right? Or four. Okay, four shots. It survives the Skeleton Dragons as well. And then we can go for a Battle Ram on the left-hand side because he's going to be down so much Elixir. The one thing I dislike about this is he's going to go Goblins. And I know that, oh, he fireballed it. And then he's going to go Goblins? Is he actually going to allocate six Elixir? He allocated six Elixir and still took damage. That is crazy value for us. That's the importance of dropping cards when your opponent doesn't have that much elixir to deal with your bridge spam because the inefficient trades that they'll do will allow you to make sure that you can stay put on defense because obviously if they're not going to have as much elixir to go and throw more stuff back at you, you're not going to have to be as worried. So I'm going to go in for possibly a P.E.K.K.A. Yeah, we're definitely going P.E.K.K.A. here. And then I don't necessarily think I even have to go click the ability. i rather allocate all of my elixir on top of this annoying Electro Giant. Yeah, I'm going to go in for Bandit here, and then I'm also going to go in for a Battle Ram as well, just to guarantee that we can snag the tower. With the Bandit, I think we're fine here. Jeez, man, he's going to go in for Goblins. Yeah, 100%. So let's go for Archers, split them up, make sure the Recruit isn't going to be too menacing for us. Oh, the Archers didn't split. That's not good. They got shot down in one hit. Okay, we're going to go Ghost. He's probably going to defend this. Let's go Bandit in the other side, and then try to get through with the Zap, maybe. Nah, we can't Zap on top of the tower there, too. We could go for a poison, but I think that's also an over-allocation. I'd rather go for a Little Prince and then maybe go and kite everything into us. Yeah, let's go and kite everything into this. Little Prince ability comes down, then we got Evolved Archers, and this is looking superb for us. There's no way that he's going to be able to defend against the Ghost as well, and also a Bandit, because he just dropped his Goblins. So he's going to have a huge problem here on his hands. The Bandit can just dash on the tower, he's dead. He's not going to let that happen. I think that the Royal Ghost, though, might allow us to win the game, or we could go and click the ability, so then we propel some counters right next to his tower i mean there's so many different things that we can do we can even go for a zap and reset the tower retarget onto the guardian but man wasn't even able to stop the guardian from slashing his tower so gg and well played i guess in an effort to counter goblin giant we caught an electro giant player in the crossfire and instead of slashing down his tower with the pekka sword our guardian had it all handled 
and we're gonna be pushing up some ranks all the way to 788 in the world. Let's see how high we can get today. It's always nice to see our name on the top of the global leaderboard. Hey, we got another top ladder menace and he's got a good banner. Yo, he's stealing my banner, the sleeping baby dragon. Hopefully the man is sleeping on the job. I'm gonna go archers in the back and we're gonna be bound to bridge spam him soon. No, so he's like top 390 in the world, so he's obviously going to be pretty talented. Whenever we see Royal Ghost, I'm immediately anticipating another P.E.K.K.A. player. It could be something different, but most of the time, Royal Ghost means P.E.K.K.A. Okay, never mind. Dude is going to have goblins. Not what I thought at all. Let's go Little Prince in the back. This is really risky because I don't have any other anti-answers since I just cycled my archers. But it's fine since we do have poison. We're not going to lose to a balloon. You can shut down the balloon only taking one hit if you do drop your poison. Okay, Electro Spirit. This has got to be a Royal Giant deck. Has to be RG. So clicking the ability here isn't foolish because it will protect our little guardian and our aggressive little prince. I think this is fine if the little prince can just pop off and fry the egg. Master Chef Little Prince in the house. Let's go. Okay, I got to go for Archer Split. And a lot of people don't do this. They look at Archers and they're like, dude, Archers are going to die to a Royal Ghost. But not really. The Royal Ghost... Ends up killing one of the archers. The other archer survives, and it gives a counter push. And also on top of that, we're getting closer to the evolution out here. So I love it. You already know. All right, we're going to go for a battle ram and a royal ghost here, and I think that's probably our best bet. Maybe we can apply pressure to the point that he's not going to be able to go for a fisherman and pull everything. We'll see. Oh, nice. Bandit's going to go and bait out the goblins in the wrong side. The barbarians are going to be a massive menace for my man. So he has to go in for a log. And the good thing about this is he can't go in for a royal giant right into a P.E.K.K.A. or evolved archers. This deck has the ability to constantly protect the Evolved Archers with Bridge Bam. And it has a fast cycle, so you can get back to the Evolved Archers quite quickly. So it's a pretty big menace for opponents, and that's the reason why this P.E.K.K.A. deck is infinitely stronger than any other P.E.K.K.A. deck that has ever existed in Clash Royale. The evolution just works so well with the card concepts of spamming all the time. Especially with dueling pressure, since you've got Bandit and Battle Ram. It's nice because I can go in for a Battle Ram in one side, a Bandit in the other, and just be like, yo... I'm chilling. I'm having a good time here because now you have to defend everything and then we can P.E.K.K.A. And then you still don't kill the stupid Archer Evolution. Look at that thing. Look at it go. It's doing so much dirty stuff to your towers out here and all your units. All right, I'm not going to poison. I think that would be really stupid. I'm going to go in for a Little Prince on the right-hand side. If he actually starts that down with no damage, I'd be surprised. He does. He played that really well. All right, let's go in for a Bandit here on the left-hand side and then probably defend with a Poison and then go for a Ghost. I don't love this. I think I did get outplayed a little bit. I might have slightly overcommitted, not going to lie, but it is what it is. I'm not going to click the Little Prince ability because that would go straight towards the Three Crown and it would actually activate King Tower. So that would be horrible for me. He's played this pretty well, all things considered. He's also going to probably have the Royal Giant Evolution, so we're going to have to get ready. Yeah, there it is. Uh, the Fisherman doesn't pull. Peck is too close, so that's good for us. And the Bandit should dash onto the Royal Giant. He's only going to get one shot on our tower, so not terrible. The only bad thing about this is the Phoenix does so much damage. All right, so the goblins are going to be in a bad spot for him. We can go for archers. He might just pull the battle room closer to his tower, which would be funny. I would love to see a fireball on the archers for a negative one elixir trade because that damage that we're going to get on the right-hand side will start to rack up if we consistently get those type of trades. If we're gradually wiggling our way back into the game and he can't go in for a royal giant because it goes right into a little prince, it'll be pretty funny. When we slow roll that P.E.K.K.A., he can't go for the royal giant on the left-hand side, so he has to go in the right, which he doesn't want to do. We could poison on top of the Phoenix, but I don't think that's worth it. It's probably better for us to set up a bigger push. Go in for Archer Split, so then we can support the P.E.K.K.A. and also finish off the Phoenix. And then also even go in for a Bandit here. Maybe even get a good trade against that. If we go for a Zap, this should be good, because then the Bandit can one-tap the Goblins. And then the Fisherman dies. And then the Phoenix probably won't be enough, because the Ghost will lock onto the Tower. And as I said before, we're gradually whittling away on the Tower. That's all we care about. We don't care about this Phoenix. It doesn't matter to me. If he goes in for a Royal Giant, we use our Little Prince. We push back the RG with the Little Prince. And now, the Royal Giant doesn't do any damage to me. We're finding our way back into the game. We're slowing down the pace of the game when we were losing. And we're figuring it out as we roll. We can go for a Battle Ram here because he just ended up using his Goblins. And it's going to be harder for him to defend everything at once if we go in for Evolved Archers. We're always getting positive Elixir trades with these stupid Evolved Archers. Every single time. And then eventually you're going to get overwhelmed because you don't have Elixir to keep up with me. If you're fireballing and you're taking a negative one trade, it might not seem like a lot. But if it's happening repeatedly, you're eventually going to have zero Elixir and I'm going to have way more than you. And then when a bandit or a battle ram is coming at you and you have nothing to defend, that's when you're going to meet your end, my friend. As we've just started our climb to 617 in the world. Hey, yo, this guy finished 179 in the world beyond. Well... It's beyond my comprehension that you would be playing anything filthy, right? You're not going to do that. You would never Goblin Giant me, sir. 
So I'm going to go Rail Ghost in the back, and I'm going to hold my P.E.K.K.A. because I think that our opponent might pounce with some cards at the river. You know what? That's hilarious. I did not expect you to make that misplay. He is legitimately going to go and pull a P.E.K.K.A. right on top of the Fisherman, allowing us to potentially break through. I don't know. I'd love for this to happen. Can we just zap on top of the Skeletons and then win the game? Is it already over? Is he already dead? Oh my gosh, that was awesome. Let's go Battle Ram and Band on the other side. He is so triggered. Top 200 player legitimately dropped the Fisherman near his tower. I've never seen someone good at the game do that before. Never in my life, but I'll take your life, my dude. Thanks for the free trophies. I mean, I, I just think that showed you guys a tragic tale of never dropping the Fisherman there. Or then, if you do, you're going to have your tail between your legs whimpering, wondering where you went wrong. Or maybe he doesn't whimper anymore. Maybe he's not wondering. Maybe he knows. He should know by now. So we're probably playing against someone with either a Lava Hound deck, Graveyard deck, or Rail Giant deck. Probably Rail Giant, I would say, because you see Skeleton King, right? So it would make sense. So let's just go for a peck at the river since we still have our little prince here. And we could poison on top of the tombstone and also hit the... Yeah, I knew he was going to tombstone. It just made sense. Hitting the archer and the tombstone is nice because the skeleton should die to the poison too. I think. And then we can pounce on the Skeleton King. Oh my gosh, does it not two-tap it? It three-taps the Skeleton King? Skeleton King has that much HP? That's insane. I didn't think that was a possibility. Anyways, archers, snipe city. Snipe city, bro. Okay, all right. I see you. I respect that. As long as the bandit's able to lock onto the mother, which we're chilling. Please, bandit. Yes, sir. <laughs> Stealing the tower right underneath your nose. And we are beyond you, bro. We're going to go on to the next game. This is an easy win. The punishing potential of P.E.K.K.A. is unmatched. And this match was an easy snatch. This guy had a tombstone and a fisherman, and he still got destroyed in seconds. And we've easily made our way up to 487 in the world. Yo, this guy finished 75 in the world. One of the better players we could even possibly match into. So you already know, we are full focus mode. I'm gonna go in for the bandit in the back, and this guy is ready to steal some value with the Dark Prince. So Dark Prince into a bandit is actually a really good transaction for us because we nullify the prince's charge and the bandit is maybe going to be able to lock onto the tower afterward. Okay, that's not going to happen. Let's go click the little prince ability and show why we have the superior prince. It's nice because the Dark Prince's charge is nullified as well. And then we can maybe go in for a battle ram in the right hand side supported by a royal ghost. And the reason I like going for the royal ghost here is because it's getting pushed by the battle ram. I wonder, oh, the battle ram just bypasses the barbot. That's huge. And then the Little Prince is ramping up the attack speed, too. That's nice. Obviously, we can go for a zap here and then maybe click the ability in the later stages of the game. But, like, right now, that's not happening. We don't have that amount of elixir. We don't have the abundance out here. We'll take the damage that we can get in the right-hand side and feel good about that. But we we're hoping for a little bit more. We don't want to have the archers unsupported. However, we are going to be cycling them as much as we possibly can. So, I could go P.E.K.K.A., but I feel like that P.E.K.K.A. Chew would be very dumb. It would get Thunderbolted down by our opponent's Baby Dragon. So I'm going to go in for a little prince here on top of the baby dragon. And then I could maybe go in for a zap if I need to. But the poison should be all we should need. I don't know. I, I, I do, I do want to go start to slow roll our P.E.K.K.A. Because he doesn't have his graveyard in cycle. So it allows us to build up a much bigger push. I like that. I could also go battle him in the back and then go for a P.E.K.K.A. as well. I think going for the P.E.K.K.A. is just slightly better than anything else. Because eventually the bar putt is going to decay eventually we will be able to break through this or bypass and go opposite lane again. So dual lane pressure is generally a priority for me. Oh, wow. He's actually freezing with barbarians from the bar putt on our side of the map. This guy's a wild child. I did not expect that. So graveyard freeze it is. Since we have poison and archers, we might have a decent matchup here. So I'm going to go for a royal ghost and I'm going to go battle him on the other side and apply that dual lane pressure because the battle ram should not get pulled. And obviously, if it goes straight towards the tower, we're going to force out the royal delivery on the side that he doesn't want to be dropping it. All right, we can go for a little prince, and then we are hoping that the bandit dashes onto the prince instead of dashing onto the wrong stuff. Oh my gosh, that was so scary. That was so scary. Our little prince is somehow still alive, and it is a miracle. Okay, cool. We can take that. We can go for evolved archers in the middle if we want. We can also maybe go in for a battle ram. Yeah, let's go for our evolved archers and start sniping that baby dragon. And then we can go in for probably a P.E.K.K.A. here. So then Baby Dragon can't finesse us. Then we can go in for a battle room on the left-hand side. Since the Evolved Archers are still alive, decomposing that Baby Dragon in seconds. We can go for a Little Prince as well to prioritize our defense. And then go in for a Bandit just to continuously support our ranged cards. That delivery was disgusting, man. I hate you for that. That was so smart on your end. Let's go click the ability so the Little Prince doesn't cross. 
and then maybe we can get something in front of Little Prince for, for extra value. This guy is playing so well. I guess Royal Delivery is just a bailout card. You feel like you're screwed, and then you drop the delivery, and you're like, nah, guess I'm fine, man. All right, let's start slow rolling a P.E.K.K.A. so we can afford a poison on defense if he decides to go for a graveyard and get the evolution of archers so we can actually apply pressure. Hard to break through defensive structures like delivery and bar play when you're playing a poison without your evolved archers on offense. So we're going to go in for a little prince here. He might go for a tornado on top of our P.E.K.K.A. and try to get some damage on our tower. He decides not to do that. He's instead going to go for a freeze. I think the baby dragon does splash onto our tower for two shots, maybe. Yeah, a little bit unfortunate that, that happened. But we could go for two P.E.K.K.A.s if I really wanted to. <laughs> I'm not going to because I think it would be rather foolish since the P.E.K.K.A. isn't one of the stronger cards in Clash Royale. He's going to go in for a Battle Ram counter, and I wonder if they can still lock him in the tower with some of the Barbarians. Yeah, one of them does. Nice. Let's continuously slow roll the P.E.K.K.A. on the right-hand side because it's going to be harder for him to defend that. He doesn't want to push into the P.E.K.K.A. He's always going to want to push opposite side. Let's go for our Evolved Archers because if we poison, it's just going to be kind of bad. From a standpoint of getting counter push, we'd rather drop units, and we have a lot of HP on the left-hand side that we can afford to eat. We've got two P.E.K.K.A.s in the playhouse, and this is just a playground for us. I, I feel like they got to rename this arena P.E.K.K.A.'s Playground. I, I have never cycled two P.E.K.K.A.s at the river like that before. <laughs> maybe we can get three in Triple Elixir. Maybe we can just break all the records. We're trying to break down his towers first. So we're going for a Little Prince. The Royal Ghost is locked into the tower. Let's go click the Little Prince ability. Then we're going to go for a Zap, and we will poison. We're dropping everything on the left-hand side, and I don't think this guy can stop me. GG, I'm so happy that the Little Prince pierced through and stole your towers and your sanity, sir. Even a ranked 75 player in the world with Tornado, Barb Hut, and Royal Delivery still got slapped by Bridge Spam. Hey, what's up, Papa Parsi? So, we're going to try to parse together some damage here if this guy wants to go and cycle his Ram Rider emotes instead of cycling cards. Maybe he'll allow us to lock onto the tower. We're going to go for Ban in the back, and the guy is still not cycling anything, so he's leaking a little bit of Elixir. Oh, okay. Night Witch. Is it going to be a Golem deck? Is it going to be something a little bit more dirty with Elixir Golem? I'm excited to see, man. I'm psyched for this one. I kind of sort of just want to pop the ability so our little prince doesn't get pulled. Oh my gosh, he's going to Miner too. <laughs> My man wasn't ready for the P.E.K.K.A. This is huge value for me. I love seeing this. Especially since we can zap on all the bats to finish him off a little bit faster. You gotta wonder, was it worth it? Is it better for me to save the zap for the impending skeleton army that all these players seemingly have? Oh my gosh, this man's leveled up the no skill. He's running the skill horde. So, when people drop minion horde at the start, it's always derpy. When they drop it later and it's delayed, it's a little bit more scary because they have more patience then. You don't know what else he's got underneath the covers. You don't know what darkness and shrouded stuff he's going to reveal as the game gets later. So, I'm going to go for a Royal Ghost on top of the Fish Boy. And then I think the Royal Ghost pairs pretty well with the Battle Ram because the Royal Ghost should get pushed and motivated. So this inspirational battle ram might allow us to propel closer to the tower and then we can go for a poison on top of the bats because if you didn't know the battle ram is not going to fare super well into a night witch bat that is pummeling it 24 7. we have to support it rather going for the poison because it does more damage finishes off the night witch bat after the night witch dies there's always one bat that spawns so i just didn't want him to get counter push with that as well i you know i'm trying to just like cope and tell you guys all the reasons why I spent two extra elixir there. And I think it's good. So, he's going to have Fisherman Giant. It might be Giant Graveyard. I don't know. I think it could be. So, if that's going to be the case, I need to make sure that the P.E.K.K.A. doesn't get pulled by an easy Fisherman for him. So, let's go for a Bandit. Bandit, you are going to get pulled today. I hope you have fun with that, bro. Okay. Uh, I don't love this. Because I kind of have to cycle Poison on defense. If I did the Little Prince ability, I wouldn't have enough Elixir for the Poison, and I need to kill the Minion Horde as the number one priority. If the Minion Horde didn't die, I had no way of finishing that off then. Whoa, dude's got Fireball too. He's really aggressive right now. But he doesn't have the Fireball and Cycle for the Evolved Archers. He might have messed up. We're going to mess him up so bad if he goes in for a Giant, and he does it. He fell for our Trap card. Unless... I think we're fine. Let's go for a Zap. Wait, why is one of the Evolved Archers dying to a Bat? That was not in the plans for me. Okay, Pekka, please don't die here. Thank you, Pekka. I appreciate that. Let's go for a Battle Ram right now, and let's go and chuck more stuff at him with our poison. So, I don't think that we're going to kill the entire minion horde, but most of it goes back into poison, so that's brilliant for us. 
We can go click the ability. We can go in for a bandit as well. And just see if we can cook while our opponent's at a low amount of elixir. I don't think he's going to be easily able to defend this. And if he does, I will eat my own words because that will make me sad. Because the giant's going to make me eat a lot of damage. Um... Going to go for a spontaneous fireball, which is a smart play. I do have to go for a Royal Ghost and a Zap because otherwise the Miner is going to be a probable pain. All right, how do we make this happen? We're up a bit. We can definitely afford to go in for a peck in the back and build up a big push. Papa, you are trying to pop off with giant spam into a P.E.K.K.A. And it's working really well for you. Surprisingly, just because of the Minion Horde, honestly. The Minion Horde is making me mess up because I can't go in for poisons when I want to. All right, let's go for the Little Prince ability when we get the chance. We're trying to separate our stuff so we can't fireball on everything at once. He's actually going to go and miss. Go for a poison right now really aggressively because he doesn't have fireball and cycle because he just used it on top of our little prince so he can't immediately kill the archers and if we zap we should be able to just kill all of the minion horde yeah he messed up real bad if you go in for that fireball and we know that the archers are definitely staying on the map then paired with zap completely clean up your skill horde and without that massive bailout card for you you can't defend our spam so naturally we went wham bam bridge bam and battle ram down his tower like subscribe for more daily videos and have an amazing rest of your day